Hello, hello. Before we start the video, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, VRV, also known as Verve. This is a multi-platform streaming service with a ton of great content. I'm talking Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, Geek and Sundry, Cartoon Hangover, and many more. And I do mean many. Seriously, it seems like every time I talk about Verve, they've added new content since the last time I talked about them. For instance, they recently added the High Dive Anime Channel, the Boomerang Channel, that's all the old Cartoon Network and Hanna-Barbera titles, as well as TBS's Final Space. If this sounds like stuff you would enjoy, you can get a free 30-day trial of the service right now by going to vrv.co slash command zone. Seriously, it's a no-brainer. 30 days, free, head on over there, sign up, and you can be watching your favorite videos before you know it. And remember, by supporting our sponsors, you're actually supporting all of our content, like extra turns. Speaking of which, let's get into it. How's it, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Extra Turns. First, let's meet our guests. Hi, everyone. My name is DJ. You might recognize me from the Command Zone, where I've been hosting with Josh. I also have my own YouTube channel, Jumbo Commander. Today on Extra Turns, I'm playing a Curie Line Slinger partnered with Timna the Weaver. This is a Mardu Artifacts deck. The purpose of the deck is to be very aggressive in the beginning. And if I can't close out the game with that, it can transition to a value-based deck where I stick artifacts in the graveyard and bring them back out again. Hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn. I am a Magic the Gathering cosplayer and a Twitch streamer. I'm also part of the new D&D show, Ravnica the Broken Pact. The deck I brought today is Una, Queen of the Fae. It's not a combo mill, it's more of a fun, light-spirited, dirtly mill. I have some stuff to keep me safe during the beginning of the game and hopefully I can mill them out at the end. If that doesn't work, Maybe I can reanimate some stuff in their graveyard and swing for lethal. Hello, my name is Kyle Hill and I run the science YouTube channel Because Science. Duh. Today I will be playing the Locust God because as well as being a science geek, I love bugs. So what do we want to do with the Locust God? We want to draw many cards. We want to start wheeling away cards and filling our hands and then that creates bugs that we can take advantage of and hopefully kill everyone before they even know what happened. I'll be like a plague, but with better hair. And the deck I brought today is Rune of the Hidden Realm. This is a blink deck. I'm gonna be playing a bunch of creatures with enter the battlefield effects and then using Rune's ability to continuously get value off them. That's right, value. I bet you never thought I'd say that. All right, let's get into the game. All right, everyone ready? Let's do it. Yeah, okay. Go. Drawing. And Spine Rock Knoll. Look at the top four. I'll put this card underneath and these on the bottom of my library, and you can go. All right, draw. Let's play a mountain and nothing else. Okay, draw, and I will play a hollowed fountain tapped. Go ahead. All right, draw. I will play a bad river tapped. Go. Okay, drawing. Command Tower. Pass. All right, draw. I'll cast Loyal Apprentice, and guess what? This has haste, so first blood coming at Josh. Take two. Ooh. Okay, I'll untap, draw, and I will play Command Tower. Go ahead. All right, untap, draw, I'll play a Swamp, and I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice my Bad River to save time. Sounds good. Pass turn. Okay, drawing, island for turn, and then I am going to play Salt Monolith. Front row. Then I will pass the turn. All right. I'm gonna play a Plains, and then I'm gonna tap three to cast my commander, Timna the Weaver. And now going to combat, because I have a commander, Loyal Apprentice is gonna trigger, giving me a hasty Thopter. And because I attacked Josh last turn, I think I'll attack him again with the Thopter, yeah. and Kyle with the Loyal Apprentice. No. Uh, I take one. I take two. Do you know what's wonderful? I just hit two of my opponents. Timna's gonna trigger and I'm gonna pay two life and draw two cards. That oh, seems good. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna move to discard and pass the turn to Josh. You have to discard already? I have to discard already. I'm gonna life. throw away a planes. Okay, on your end step, I'm gonna worldly tutor. So I'm gonna worldly tutor for a wood elves, which means I'm gonna cast it on my next turn and get a forest. Can I just search for them both right now? Go for it, Josh. Okay, so worldly tutor finds wood elves. I untap, I draw that for a turn. I play my land for turn, which is a winding canyons. I play the wood elves, and then that'll bring into play the breeding pool that I found earlier. Go ahead, Ashley. <laughs> All right, draw, and then I will play Urborg. 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 Go ahead. And untap, draw. Uh, I will play saltwater cliffs for my turn and gain one life. 
and then tap Basalt Monolith for three, play Is It Signet, one floating, and then I will play Jace's Archivist, and then pass a turn. All right, untap, draw, play a Blink Moth Nexus, and then I'm gonna play an Arcbound Ravager. Uh, it comes in with a modular one, and then I'm going to move to combat. Loyal Apprentice will trigger, I'll make a Thopter with haste, and I will send a Flying Thopter at Kyle. I'll send two damage at Ashlyn with this Loyal Apprentice, and Josh will get a Thopter as well. I can't block anything with flying, so I take one. I also take one. I'll take two. All right, I hit three opponents, so I'm gonna pay three life and draw three cards. Little Apprentice really good with Timna, as it turns <laughs> out. Jeez, can discard again? I'll play SRAM, and then I'll move to discard. Okay. I'm gonna discard a duplicate and pass. Okay, I will untap, draw. All right, I'm gonna play a Flooded Strand. I'll crack it for something that taps for mana, and then I will play Rune, taking one, and I will pass the turn. Okay, draw. I will play a Reliquary Tower, and say go. Okay, untap, upkeep, draw, play a very classic snow-covered island for the turn, and then tap six and play the Locust God. <sighs> and the table and breathes down. a big sigh <laughs> it's fine. as the Locust God comes onto Look, the battlefield. It, Locusts are harmless. There's usually only one of them. Don't they come in, <laughs> <laughs> in planes, usually? I feel like you're thinking of the wrong insect. I mean, they don't black out the sky with their wings, which literally happens sometimes. Just kidding, pass the turn. Untap, draw. So you are very dangerous, and you're about to wheel what us. What are you talking about? He's got a wheel on board. He has an onboard wheel, which sounds horrible. Yeah, but look at all the stuff you got. Look, it doesn't have- I do have a lot of things, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm gonna play an Ancient Tomb and Swiftfoot Boots. It's gonna trigger SRAM and I'm gonna draw a card, and Ancient Tomb will deal two damage to me. What is, what is this aggro value happening? That's confusing to me. Then I will pay two for a Hangerback Walker with a single counter on it. Then I will move to combat. Thopter made with Loyal Apprentice because I have Timna out, and let's get some attacks going on. I know that Timna is gonna come at Ashlyn. I know that I'm having at least one Thopter going at Josh, and then let's send two flying Thopters over at Kyle. Uh, I still have no flyers, so I take one. I can't do anything, so I take two commander damage. And then I will eat one of your Thopters with my Locust Gun. Dead Thopter and then take one. Okay, I'm gonna gain two life from the lifelink to Ashlyn, but then I'm gonna pay three life to draw three cards. So that's gonna net who's one life. One, two, is good. three. Drawn so many cards. I have drawn a few cards. So I'm gonna play a Blood Forge Battle Axe and SRAM's gonna trigger, allowing me to draw a card. Uh. And I'm gonna pay one for a Wayfarer's Bobble and uh. I'm gonna discard a Mer Battle Sphere. Pass turn. Okay, and I will untap, draw. It's like I don't want the wheel to happen. I feel like DJ's just running away with it a little bit here. Need to remove I'm gonna get out of hand. Let's just say I'm at the lowest life. <laughs> <laughs> I am losing okay. this game. How many cards do you have in your hand? Dude, you've discarded the hand size every turn. <laughs> I have also discarded the hand size every turn. Pretty good. All right, I'm gonna tap three, and I'm gonna play Reflector Mage on Timna. I'm not happy with that. I know you're not. Oh. Yeah, I'm just actually gonna send it to the command zone. Okay, and then, Kyle, mm -hmm. I'm gonna attack you uh, with my 4-4 Vigilance EI. I'm gonna take it. Okay. Lose four. And that's commander damage. And then I'm gonna play an Azorius Chancery, which bounces a Tundra back to my hand, and I will pass the turn. All right, end of your turn. I will play Memory Plunder, targeting your Worldly Tutor. Oh, sweet. So you get to play my Worldly Tutor? Yes, without paying its mana cost. Okay. That Urborg doing work, too. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take Nemesis of Reason. Okay. Untap, draw Nemesis of Reason. I'll play Temple of the False God. And then, are you gonna use that wall next turn? What? Wizard? The wizard, it's a wizard. Yeah, uh, I mean. It's pretty likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he is 100% yeah, going to I use mean, it. Probably. <sighs> All right, I will Grizzly Spectacle, your Locust God. No. Okay, instead of putting Locust God into the command zone, I'm going to put it into the graveyard. Okay. Quick, exile it. And then I mill according to its power, which is four, one. Ooh. Two. Oh, great. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yay! That was a good mill. Mmm, <laughs> so good. Thank you. That's great. You're welcome. Okay. And I'm done. Pass turn. All right, end step. Locust God returns to my hand. And untap. Upkeep. Nothing. Draw. Something. I will play a mountain for the turn. I want to spice the game up a little bit. Do I want to spice the game up? No, what does that I, mean? I'm no longer yes. referring to you. Yes. Do you want? Yes. Can, if, is it going to mess him up in some way? It's, it's going to. It's going to speed things along quite a bit. I like Let's this. Do okay, Let's I do it. I love it. I am going to play Dream Halls. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. So, 
It's a scary card for everyone, but oh, um, it's yeah. not great for DJ because he's all colorless. All. Yeah. Oh, it, is it not? <laughs> um, I like this card. So I'm going to discard Commit to Memory, and I'm going to cast Locust God. And then I'm going to pay blue, and I'm going to wheel with Jace's Archivist here. I have seven cards. I have two. I have five. Boy, with Dream Halls, it's pretty good. Okay, so we're all going to discard our hands and draw seven, because DJ has seven, which is the most. So everybody discard and draw seven. <sighs> All right, and as I draw seven, I'm gonna create seven locust tokes, as it's called in the business. Yeah, that's seven one one hasty flyers. And then I'm gonna discard Biden of Thassa to play Parallel Thoughts. So you tutor for seven cards, and then anytime you would draw, you get to pick one of those cards? Yeah. Or if I were to wheel, I get them all, and then, then it's bad. Okay, so in response, I'm gonna discard Vizier of Tumbling Sands to play Swan Song, countering your enchantment. I have no response. <laughs> You get a tutu uh, bird. You get a bird. Well, thank you so much. You're no problem. So, no problem. Oh, you're so nice to me. Well, yeah, you know, because your turn's going so badly now. I'm sorry to throw a wrench in it. What are you? <laughs> Look, I don't, I don't know what everyone's talking about. You know, Josh just countered your awesome spell, and you have a bunch of hasty locuses. I mean, I can bounce Locust God, and then you won't be able to play him next turn. I don't want to wheel again, actually. You like your hand. I do like my hand. Because I still feel threatened by DJ, I'm gonna attack you with three insect flying hasty boys. I will not block. Okay. I'll go down to 29. <laughs> Perfect, I'm done. All right, untap, drop. I'm gonna play my land for turn. I'm gonna take two from the ancient tomb and I'm going to play Protection from Kyle's deck, also known as Sword of Fire and Ice. Good card. It's gonna trigger SRAM and I'm gonna draw a card. Then I'm gonna pay two and equip the sword to my Arcbound Ravager. And then I'm gonna also equip this Bloodforge Battle Axe to this Arcbound Ravager as well. What's that make him? That makes the Arcbound Ravager a 5-3. Five, 5-3, three. Five, three, protection from blue and red. Now, DJ, I propose that you don't attack me. What do you, what And do you... in return, not, not a single locust leg shall come your way. How about if I still attack you, but I don't go all in and do 20 to you? You do 20 to me? Yeah, because With the arc Arcbound Ravager and you have combined. To a lot I would, yeah, I'd have to sacrifice a lot of my board, yeah. So how about if I just poke you for five? And shoot one of the locusts or something with the. I mean, it doesn't two. seem like the best bargain, but okay, uh, yeah, sure. Deal. Okay, I'm just going to attack you with this wonderful little Arcbound Ravager. I cannot block, so I will take five. Hitting Kyle with the Arcbound Ravager has a couple triggers. The first one is I create a copy of the Bloodforge Battle Axe. Also, Sword of Fire and Ice will trigger. I will deal two damage to this Jace's Archivist, and I will draw a card. Technically not part of the deal. <laughs> then I drew this Curse of Opulence, which sucks unless you pitch it to Dream Halls, and it allows me to cast a Goblin Welder. Oh, uh, okay. What's in your graveyard? <laughs> Duplicate, Mer Battlesphere. Oh, gosh. Worm Coil Engine. Oh, man. And I will pass the turn to Josh. Okay, before your end step, I'm going to pay two. I'm going to blink my Wood Elves. So on your end step, it will come back, and I will find a forest. So I'm going to find Canopy Vista, and then I will untap, and I will draw. Okay, I'm going to tap my Winding Canopy. I'm going to play Soul Ring. I'm going to play Minamo as my land for turn. And then I am going to discard Fabricate to Dream Halls to cast Progenitor Mimic. Cool. And my Progenitor Mimic is going to copy Reflector Mage. And that's going to bounce Locust God back to your hand, and you can't play it next turn. Uh, and then I guess that's all I'm going to do, so go ahead. Untap, draw. I'm going to pay two and play Psychic Surgery. I'm going to go ahead and discard Spoils of Evil to the Dream Halls to cast Una. That's good. Oh, yeah. I just cast my six mana commander <laughs> for free. She's, for free. She's here finally. <laughs> all right, and then I, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and use Una's ability since it's, she can use it right now. So I will do that for one, two, three, four. So I will target you, Kyle, for four. So the color I'm gonna name is blue. And it looks like nada. No! Swing and a miss. No, no blue. Okay, well, I guess all I have left to do is discard Animate Dead and play a Sepulchral Primordial. Oh no. So you get a, a creature out of each of our graveyards? And it comes into play. That's pretty good. So from Kyle's graveyard, I'll get Jace's Archivist. From Josh's graveyard, I'll get Nevermaker. And from DJ's graveyard, I'll get Duplicant. Uh, All right, so the Duplicant's gonna trigger and I'm gonna target the Welder. And the Welder is exiled. <laughs> and pass turn. Before your end step, I'm gonna activate Rune targeting the Nevermaker, but when it leaves play, <laughs> You have a trigger, you get to bounce a non-land permanent onto the top of someone's library. Hmm, what will I pick? I think it's gonna be a Dream Halls. I have no response, so Dream Halls is gonna go on top of my library. Go ahead. All right, untap, upkeep, 
draw. Play mountain for turn. And then I'm going to attempt to cast Dream Halls again. Yep, happens. Cool. Good card. Um, I am going to pay one and cast Skull Clamp. Oh. Okay. That's so good. I will pay one and equip Skull Clamp to one of the Locusts. It dies, I draw two. <laughs> with Dream Halls. Amazing with Dream Halls. Yeah. And I'm gonna pay my last open mana to do the same thing, Skull Clamping one of the Locusts. Got two more. Drawing two. I am going to discard Expansion Explosion to play uh, Chandra Flamecaller. Oh, free Planeswalker. I'm gonna discard Brainstorm to play Mind Over Matter. Oh my gosh. Front row. Ooh. So I'm gonna activate Chandra's ability for zero, keeping her at four, and discard my hand, which is four, and draw that many plus one. But as I discard Locust God, I'm gonna have that go to the command zone instead, and uh, I will draw five. And then I will discard Goblin an Electromancer to cast uh, Coastal Piracy. I'm going to discard this card using Mind Over Matter to untap Basalt Monolith. Tap Basalt Monolith for three. I'm gonna use one to Skull Clamp Trigger on this Locust. Oh two. my gosh. And then I'm gonna use, just to save time, do that two more times. Draw four more. Why couldn't I reflect your mage dream halls? Seriously. I'm gonna discard time reversal to cast Niv Mizzet Perun. Yep. I'm going to discard Ristic Study to play Wind Reader Sphinx. And then, good sir, I know this is scary, but we made a deal. We did. I am going to attack. I feel like no one's. She's got a 5 Oh, five she's point. got a 5 5 5. <laughs> Just to send him into a fairy queen. Because of the reflector mage and doing that stuff. And also because all other avenues were exhausted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just want to know that's fair. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack you with uh, three flying creatures, four total in the air. Okay. Um, but on that trigger, I'm going to draw three, which triggers Niv Mizzet Perun. And I'm going to point that three damage at reflector mage. In response, I'm going to activate Minamo. By paying a blue, I'm gonna untap rune, and then I'm gonna pay two, tap rune, and exile the reflector mage until end of turn. Okay, and then uh, take four damage from three flying creatures. I'll go down to 30. Good. And then on that trigger, uh, Coastal Piracy, I will draw three cards, and that three damage then, I'll point one damage at both your Thopters and one at the Loyal Apprentice. Okay, I'm gonna sacrifice one of my Thopters to Arcbound Ravager to put a counter on it, and do that with the second one as well. And my loyal apprentice, no matter how loyal, ends up dying. Loyal to the end. And then, with Mind Over Matter, I'm gonna choose and discard a card, which is an island, and use that to untap my command tower. And then, I'm gonna pay one red, and uh, cast Winds of Change. No. Did I, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, if we didn't yeah. have anything to do with Mind Over Matter, then we don't have anything to do with this. So I'm gonna draw eight. I'm gonna draw three. I'm gonna draw three. Maybe I'll draw, draw some. Answer. Answer. How many are you answer? drawing, DJ? Seven. And then Niv Mizzet will trigger, so I'll draw an additional card, so I have nine cards, which means I have nine damage on the stack from Niv Mizzet as well. Correct. And so I'll direct three of the damage at the Progenitor Mimic, which is a Reflector Mage, and then I will point the other six of it at Ashlyn. All right, I'll take six. Progenitor Mimic down. And with it, our hopes and dreams. I'm gonna discard Seagate Wreckage to untap Assault Monolith and retap it and play Swiftfoot Boots and then equip Swiftfoot Boots on Niv Mizzet. Oh crap. Then pitch a card to Mine Over Matter, untap Assault Monolith, tap Assault Monolith for three. Uh, I'm gonna Skull Clamp two of these insects and I'm gonna draw four. And then that four damage is coming at Josh's face. Go to 26. Then I'll discard Magma Quake to play Mind Moil. Yep. Discard a land, untap Assault Monolith, tap Assault Monolith. Discard again to untap a land. Discard again to untap a land, play Psychosis Crawler. Put four on the bottom of my library. Draw four, and then Niv Mizzet trigger. I'm going to direct all four of that damage at Ashlyn. And take four. Just to keep things fair, you know. Keep it even, I like that. But just four damage because Psychosis Crawler is on the stack here with Mind Moil, so it's not gonna trigger its own ability. And then I will discard Breath of Fury to Dream Halls to cast Perforos, God of the Forge. And on that cast, I will Mind Moil again. Okay, wait, hold on a second. So in response to the Mind Moil trigger, I'm gonna cross and grip the Psychosis Crawler and destroy it. Ugh. Psychosis <laughs> Crawler dies, so I will put my hand on the bottom of my library and then draw two, and then DJ, take two, please. I'll take two from Niv Mizzet. Okay, and I believe that is the end of my turn. I mean, have you done enough? 
Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I've exhausted all my resources. <laughs> On end step, my reflector mage is going to return to the battlefield. And all right. it will bounce the perforos back to your hand and you can't play it next turn. All right, fine. All right, untap, upkeep, draw. Okay, I still have Sword of Protection from Kyle. Mm. I mean, we're 100% dead to you. Next turn, can you kill him? Can you kill him? Yeah. Please. Yes. Uh, oh. So, like so I'm gonna start by activating the Ancient Tomb, going to 23, and spending one of that mana on a Soul Ring, and the other mana on an Icar Wellspring. When it comes into play, I'm gonna draw a card. Then I'm going to pay two for a Cranial Plating. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good card. Uh, I think he can end it. Get pretty close. No. Are you saying no like you're gonna stop it or that <laughs> yeah. no that's bad? <laughs> that resolves and all sorts of good stuff? Uh, fine. Okay, <laughs> cranial plating resolves. <laughs> it's very I'll happy. play an Ink Moth Nexus as my land per turn. I'll pay two for a Steel Overseer. Uh, and then I'll pay one. Stop it. To equip this cranial plating to this protected Arcbound Ravager. How big is it now? Yeah, how big is it? It is a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's it? We need to get 10 more power on it. I can technically equip this over here. Okay, if I go all in on this, are you guys going to attack me? If you take care of Kyle, then I will not retaliate. I'll let you untap. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, you can mill me, that's fine. No attacking. So I'm gonna sacrifice Icar Wellspring to the Arcbound Ravager. So this goes into the graveyard, this gets four counters on it, and I draw a card. Part of me going all in is sacrificing Hangerback Walker to Arcbound Ravager. And it will get a plus one, plus one counter right here. And then also it will produce a Thopter. So that adds one extra damage to it as well. We're up to 19 now? Yes. And I'm going to equip the last Bloodforge Battle Axe with the last of my mana on here. And that's pretty much everything so that I can do. 23 damage total. 21 plus two from Sword of Fire Nice. Ooh. Go to combat. Mm -hmm. You're not actually dead. You're not dead. Swing it, Kaya. Oh, really? <laughs> Okay. Take 21? I mean, I think so, yeah. All right, I got some triggers. Okay, but first, so. you take 21 damage. Just one moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you gotta waste. <laughs> I believe that's the correct number. Trigger sort of fire and ice. Uh, two more damage at your face. I see a little discrepancy between my life and the rest. <laughs> I'm also gonna draw a card from the Sword of Fire and Ice. I'm also gonna create two more Blood Forge Battle Axes because I have two of them that hit you. Oh. And seeing as though I think Dream Halls is going away pretty soon, <laughs> I'm going to pitch a Stoneforge Mystic to cast this Timna the Weaver. That's so good. And then I am going to pass my turn. Okay, I untap, I will draw. Okay, I'm going to play top. And with the one floating, I'm gonna to top. Okay, I guess I'll do that. I'm thinking of blinking her Sepulchral Primordial. I am all in favor of this. Since I can't help my own board, helping yours kind of helps me a little. Also, DJ will immediately kill us both if I don't do that. I want to make this. I want to make the same threat. deal you just made. I give her the tools and to both of you. Then I at least untap. Yes, I will. I will let you untap. I mean, I, I have no problem nothing. with that. You're helping me. Sounds like a lot of cool plans happening after I'm dead. <laughs> I'm gonna be right behind you. So, <laughs> and then I'm going to activate Rune, mm -hmm. targeting the Sepulchral Primordial. And then I'm gonna play my land for turn, which is Alchemist Refuge. And yeah, then I'm gonna pass turn. All right, so end of turn. Yep. The Pulchral Primordial comes back. I get the graveyards. All right, so I get Progenitor Mimic, Arjun of the Shifting Flame, and Wormcoil Engine. Progenitor Mimic is going to copy the Primordial, which in turn will give me the Goblin Electromancer, Mirror Battle Sphere, and Frag Tusk. And then gain five from Frag Tusk entering the battlefield. Can I provide you with Murs? Yes, please. You get four of them. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. Here's three Murs, and let me get you one more. One Mur. One <laughs> There's one Mur. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Two, Boo. three. And then I will untap. Progenitor Mimic will trigger, and I'll get another Primordial. From the new Primordial, I'll get a Psychosis Crawler, a Loyal Apprentice, and a Vizier of Tumbling Sands. All right, so draw for turn. Yep, Psychosis Crawler triggers, we all take one. That's 20% of Kyle's life. <laughs> All right, so while Dream Halls is still in play, I am going to... Not dead yet. <laughs> I'm going 
going to discard Night Howler to play Avatar of Woe. Whoa. I will, I guess, move to combat? Okay, I will discard three cards to Mind Over Matter and tap down the two Primordials, which ha which I cannot block, and the Mer Battle Sphere, which could do damage to my face directly. So, there, okay. All right, I will swing all of yours with the Worm Coil uh, and the little mirrors. I will take the damage. Okay. Oh, my body. All right, now I will gain six from Worm Coil. And now we have a new threat. Oh, come on, you have a lot still. All I know is I'm not the threat. Look at my <laughs> board, look at your guys' board. You could barely fit your stuff. Rearrange some stuff here. Terrifying. Okay, what I think I'm gonna do, I will play Sakashima the Imposter. Okay. Copying, I believe, Rune of the Hidden Realm. Yep. It's pretty good with Vizier. And I will then, I think, pass turn. I feel like we're in trouble. Yeah, we're in good trouble, but I've been in trouble the whole game, so. Let's see what I draw. Okay. So I have no way to do anything to you. But at least we got rid of him. Leaving me around uh, gets rid of a few of her things, so I start to take them back. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking very favorably yeah. uh, of you right now. If you blink that duplicate, blink that could be duplicate. really good. It go, it'll go back on my side of the battlefield and I can start exiling your stuff. Okay, if you do nothing to me at all, then I'll do that. Yeah, I will do nothing to you. Okay. okay, I'm going to move to combat, and I'm just gonna attack Ashlyn with this uh, thing that's easily chumpable, but at least... It's ginormous. It's what? ginormous. Lock with the Thrag Tusk. It dies. Okay, dead Thrag Tusk. And then I get a 3-3 green beast creature token. Okay. And then I'm going to tap a Soul Ring and this Ancient Tomb, taking two more damage. And I will play a Kark Clan Ironworks. Ruh -roh. And then I will pay three for a scrap trawler. Uh oh. So then I'm going to sacrifice this Wayfarer's Bobble to generate two mana. And this will go to the graveyard so that scrap trawler will trigger and I can return this hangerback walker to my hand. Okay, you got two mana floating. Excellent. I'm going to sacrifice one of my Bloodforge battle axes to gain two more mana. So that puts yep. me up to four colorless mana, and that allows me to cast this Hangerback Walker for two. So I'm going to sacrifice Hangerback Walker to Core Clan Ironworks. Yep. When this Hangerback Walker dies, I also have two Thopters coming onto the battlefield. So I have two mana floating. If I sacrifice both of these Thopters, I can get up to six mana. And then that allows me to sacrifice another Bloodforge Battle Axe to Core Clan Ironworks to get up to eight mana. And then that allows me to scrap trawler this hangerback walker back to my hand. And then uh, I'm gonna spend five of it on a precursor golem, going down to three floating colorless mana. I get, I have three golems total. And then I will cast this hangerback walker and I'll pay one more mana into it. It'll be a two, two. Then I will tap this steel overseer to add a counter to all of my artifacts. Oh man. No. <laughs> yep. That happens. Okay, and then I will sacrifice this Precursor Golem to Kirkland Ironworks, floating two mana, and then Scrap Trawler will trigger this Iker Wellspring back to my hand, and I will use that two mana to cast Iker Wellspring, drawing a card. Cool. And then sacrifice the Hangerback Walker again, generating two mana. I will get three Thrupters this time. I'm gonna sacrifice this Iker Wellspring to Kirkland Ironworks, going up to four mana. I'll draw a card, and it will also return this Hangerback Walker to my hand, and I will redeploy the hanger back walker. So it's a 2-2 again. <laughs> a lot happened. A lot did happen. A lot of things on the board. So before your end step, I'm gonna Minamo, untap rune, tap rune, progenitor mimic. What's in everybody's graveyard? I have some goodies. So progenitor mimic on the primordial. So I'm gonna bring back uh, Rexiel from Ashland's graveyard and the Precursor Golem from DJ's. I'm gonna need two tokens. And then I will activate top. Uh, I'll reorder them like that, and then I will untap. Upkeep trigger, Progenitor Mimic, make another Sepulchral Primordial. So I'll get Weapon Enthusiast and Nemesis of Reason, I guess. And then I will draw for turn. And Weapon Craft Enthusiast is gonna make two servos when it comes in. So Josh gets to have a crazy board for once. Um, feels like I can't attack anything else. So I'm gonna go to combat and I'm gonna swing Rexiel at Ashlyn with my Swamp Walk. All right. For five. I don't believe I can do anything about that, so I will take five. 
and then that'll trigger and I can cast an instant or sorcery and I will cast Grizzly Spectacle um, and I will target. To be fair, you were already helping him so you could at least target him with my That's spell. fair, I'm, he, he's gonna duplicate your thing. Yeah, I'm gonna target Scrap Trawler. Probably should have put some Swift Foot Boots on that. So I'm going to sacrifice Scrap Trawler to Arcbound Ravager. Getting seven counters on this now. Uh, scrap Trawler itself triggers. I get to get back an artifact. I'm gonna choose Icar Wellspring. All right, then I'm going to pay five and I'm gonna Acidic Slime targeting the Kark Clan Ironworks. I will sacrifice the Kark Clan Ironworks to the Arcbound Ravager. That also makes me sad. Then I will uphold my bargain. I will activate Rune and I will blink the duplicate. And get the duplicate. And then I will pass the turn and duplicate comes back in. I'm going to exile your Sakashima Rune. All right. Unfortunately, I cannot return it to my hand, so. Which is exiled. And duplicate is a 4-4. Four, four. Mm -hmm. All right, your go, Ashlyn. Uh, end of your turn, I will go ahead and activate Una for two, targeting mm -hmm. Josh. Okay. Let's go blue. Okay. So I get one. Get one from Fate Stitcher on these. They're episodes. exiled. So I get one little fairy. All right, go ahead. All right, untap all this fun stuff. Get this stuff off my playmat. I mean, I need some extra room. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you vanquish a foe, you get to uh, take over their lands. That's it, just. Pretty sure it says that in the rules. <laughs> all right, draw for turn. And then at the beginning of combat, I'll make a Thopter from Loyal Apprentice. All right, I'm gonna swing both of my Primordials at you, DJ, and I'll swing Una and the Sphere at you, Josh. Okay. I will block one of your Primordials with my Timna the Weaver. And I have no flyers, so I will take six. I'll take five, but I'll gain two from the lifelink, so I'll go down three. And I will uh, pass the turn. I will also pass the turn. <laughs> Thank you. I will untap. Draw. So he's holding me hostage with the rune because he can blink whatever shenanigans I do, any counters I have. So I can't really threaten Josh as long as that rune is on the battlefield. You could target rune right now and blow it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like you can still hold up your avatar with your vizier. Yeah. So you still have me in check and you can send my damage at Josh. Or you can just kill the Arcbound and then neither of us is, uh, you know, in danger of any <laughs> kind because that's the thing. All right, the rune's causing a lot of problems. I'm gonna woe the rune just to progress the board state. Okay, I'm gonna activate Minamo. Untap rune, activate rune, targeting the Reflector Mage. So Reflector Mage blinks out and rune dies to the avatar. I will put it back in the command zone. Rune, you fought well. So you have no flyers, right? Correct. Okay. I will cast a Hellkite Tyrant. Yeah. I'm going to uh, try to equip Swiftfoot Boots to it. Are you trying to force my woe? You kind of got to kill it in response. Yeah. So in response, I will tap Vizier to untap my Avatar of Woe, and then I'll use my Avatar of Woe to kill your Hellkite. My Hellkite dies. It's very sad, but I had to give it a try. Okay, activate the Ink Moth and equip the Cranial Plating over onto the Ink Moth and send it at Josh. So I take uh, more than 10 poison damage. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay, so when I die, sorry guys, this stuff is exiled. My golem, no. All right, and then there were two. And I'll pass the turn. Okay, on instep, I'll una you for five. I'm gonna go with white. Okay. Yeah, his deck is not good for giving you fairies. Well, the good news is it didn't matter what you put, yeah. what color you picked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then I will tap and draw. Okay, I will play reanimate, targeting your hell kite. Thank you. And then I will lose six life from that. I like that Hellkite. I mean, right now. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's all I can do right now. I will play a land return and pass turn. Okay, I'm going to tap Steel Overseer to add a counter to all of my artifacts. Yeah. Then I'm going to sacrifice Hangerback Walker to Arcbound Ravager. I will get uh, three Thopters. All right, untap, upkeep, draw. How many flyers do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I just need 12 more artifacts and I win the game. <laughs> I'm going to play Sword of the Animus, and then I'm gonna trigger Saram and draw a card. And then Swift Foot Boots, not a Swift Foot Boots, a Lightning Greaves. <laughs> I was gonna say. And I'll draw a card with Saram. Okay, Ashlyn, I feel like I need to try and win the game right now, rather than letting things get out of control. So, I'm going to activate this Ink Moth Nexus. I'm also going to pay one to activate this Blink Moth Nexus, then I'm going to go to combat. I'm gonna move my attacks up here so it's a little bit clearer, but I'm coming in with all of my, all my flyers, basically. All right, so for blocks, I will go ahead and 
activate Una for one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm gonna go with red. All right, so I got nothing. Wow. Zero again. I mean, that was, yeah. it's better than seeing a white card come in there. I would have felt worse if there was a white card. <laughs> all right, so let's block. That's about all I can do. So these three one ones are getting through right now? Okay, I'm gonna pay two black to equip my cranial plating to one of those thopters that is getting through. Yep, I will Avatar of Woe, the one you attach the cranial plating to. Sure. So now there's two of these, cranial plating falls off. And I will pay two more black to equip the cranial plating back to one of those. And the Urborg, as it turns out. The Urborg turned out to be good. <laughs> no! So now we're at 21, 22, 23 damage. And I'm gonna tap Steel Overseer to add more counters. So that'll be 24, 25 damage, because I'll add two more damage here, right? Yes, and then I will sacrifice this Arcbound Ravager. So with modular, you put the nine counters on the Thopter? Yes. And that is? It's, it's enough. enough. It it's is enough. more than enough. Sorry. <laughs> Artifacts! Victory. All right, congratulations, DJ. That was a pretty epic game, right? I got to admit, I was pretty sure we were all dead when Kyle got that Mind Over Matter Dream Halls thing going. Yeah, that was nuts. If you're enjoying Extra Turns and you want us to continue the series, remember, you can support us by supporting our sponsors, like VRV or Verve, which we mentioned at the beginning of this video. And another way to support our content is to use our affiliate link, cardkingdom.com slash command zone. When you purchase your magic cards, products, gifts for the holidays, anything at all, it really, really does help us out. And the final way to support all of our content is by going to patreon.com slash command zone, where you can contribute to our channel directly. Plus, you get access to a bunch of cool perks. For example, we've been having a lot of fun with our patrons lately on our Discord server. And if you want to join the conversation, have a chance to chat with Jimmy, DJ, myself, and our whole Command Zone family, well, we'd like you to think about joining up. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.